Hey everyone, so in this video, I'm gonna be going through with you a make.com automation tutorial. And so this is a good overview if you're looking to get started with make.com and see what it's about. Now, make.com is specifically for people who are both in business or personally working or studying just because it helps with a lot of automation. So make.com, if we hop into our computer right over here, it's very huge with come when it comes to automation. So from tasks and workflows to apps and systems, you basically can automate anything and it's also very, very friendly for especially as someone like me who has like no coding experience. So you don't need to learn code. I mean, from someone who's been learning make.com for the past like eight months, I didn't know anything about code and I was still able to build a lot of automations. It's a very friendly user interface. And so if you haven't signed up for make.com just yet, you can use my link down below and you'll also get one month of the pro plan for free. So once you actually do sign up, you're gonna reach this dashboard that looks like here. So there's a lot of tabs on make.com that I actually don't use. So I will, I'll be reasoning out why I don't use those tabs in particular, but the main organization dashboard tab, when you first log in, it shows you how many operations that you have and how many unused operations that you have. So operations are basically like the credits being used on make.com. And they also give you a graph of how many operations were used throughout the past, I think 30 days or past month or so. If you scroll down, you're gonna see scenarios that require attention. And so scenarios are basically an entire automation from beginning to end. That is one scenario. So scenarios that require attention are maybe scenarios where I need to connect my Gmail account or reconnect my Gmail account, or maybe there was something that off the Excel sheet was renamed and so that led to an error. Here are all my active scenarios. And then under teams, you can invite team members or work colleagues to actually use your make.com as well. Just because me personally, as someone who's more of like a, a solo business owner, I don't really use all my operations. So as you can see, my usage resets gonna be on October 29th and I still have 7,000 unused operations. If you click on subscription, that's where you can actually handle your subscription methods. I don't really use these other three tabs as far as variables, installed apps, and scenario properties go. Again, this is coming from more from a standpoint of someone who has no coding experience, um, isn't really tech savvy, and so this is the main dashboard that I do tend to look at. Now, if we move on to actually go ahead and click on scenarios, this is a common tab that you'll be browsing around as well. So you can organize your tabs or folders or scenarios, I mean, based on folders. So I have it based on the types of action. I have it based on individuals who I'm also learning make.com from. Um, Jono is really good to teach make.com. Nick Sarab is also very good to teach make.com. In just a second, we're actually gonna go through one of Nick's scenarios that I learned from him online, just because it'll be a good demonstration as far as what make.com can actually do. So you can organize all your scenarios based on different folders. You can see which scenarios are active, which ones are inactive. You can create a new scenario on top. A lot of the times, I actually just end up cloning scenarios, okay? So I'll just click on this drop down menu and clone a scenario, just so I don't have to start completely from scratch. My nomenclature when it comes to actually naming my scenarios is I like to name the scenarios whether or not it's actually working or whether it's in draft. So you can see some are in draft, some are just like experimental, some are actually working. And then here you can see which scenarios are actually turned on or off. And then the Thunderbolt icon that you see here, if you highlight over it, it means that the scenario will start immediately when the specified event happens. If you see a clock, that means the scenario runs on a schedule. So maybe it's every hour, every three hours, every six hours. You can set that yourself. Now to continue with the nomenclature and how I name my scenarios, I name it based on like what the beginning trigger is and then what the end product is. So in this case, it's a Star Trek Nation Feedly that ends up on Google Sheets. Over here, if we go into a draft one, it's input tutorial topic and then it ends out with a script. So that's kind of helps give me the idea as far as what this scenario overall does. Now you can see when the date the scenario was last created. Again, if you highlight over all these gray areas, they should it does tell you like what it actually means and such. And then on the left hand side here, you can essentially just see all like a good glimpse of all the icons being used or all the apps being used within that scenario. Now, before we actually hop into the scenario, they do have a templates tab. And so I don't use this all too much. I mean, you can browse around and maybe it'll give you ideas of what you can do with make.com. Uh, connections are basically all the connections that you have connected to your make.com account. And then webhooks 
are all the webhooks that you have connected to your make.com account. So webhooks, think of webhooks as like a as like a direct signal or direct trigger from one app to another. But on the bottom down here, you can see a resource hub, what's new, notifications, and then your settings on the bottom left hand side. Now what I want to do is actually hop onto a scenario. And so I do want to give credits to again Nick Sorops actually teaching this scenario. But with make.com, again as someone who has no coding experience, I've learned make.com through a series of a lot of trial and error. And I imagine that's gonna be the same case for you. If you're willing to learn make.com, just be prepared to actually go through a series of trial and error. Trial and error meaning like you're going to run, in, you're going to start a scenario and it's gonna run into an error and then you have to fix the error and then start the scenario again and then it's gonna run into an error. And it's basically back and forth as far as trying to figure out where the errors have occurred. And that's just part of the learning process. And it is kind of like exponential learning. It's a very slow start to actually learning make.com, especially from someone who really isn't tech savvy like myself. But once you start getting the hang of it, it does start to make a lot more sense. So here we are inside of one of uh, our scenarios. And what you see here are basically the first thing on the left hand side, it works from a left to right sequence. The left module is always a trigger. So you can see the clock icon. The clock icon means that it's running on a schedule. Right now, this scenario is turned off, but if I click on run once, it's actually going to start the scenario. The trigger, you always need a trigger for every scenario, whether it's on a timely schedule or whether um, it's based on you adding something to an Excel sheet or maybe it's based on a new RSS feed getting a blog article. There's so there's probably like thousands of different types of triggers that you can use when it comes to make.com. In this case, we just have a trigger where Google form, if a Google form response is actually filled out, this will run on a schedule every 15 minutes to actually analyze the Google form uh, responses and then send an email. So with triggers, you can browse basically all the different types of triggers that they have. To actually add a trigger, you just need to right click and click on add a module. Now, because there's already a trigger here, it won't give you like other trigger modules just because there can only be one trigger for one scenario. So with that, you can actually click it again to actually delete. Here you can see the schedule setting. So right now it's set to every 15 minutes, but if I click on that, I can change it to every hour, every six hours, etc. Now here's where you save it, but instead of clicking the save button, just click on command S. And then as you can see, the scenario was saved down over here. Over here we have scenario inputs. So in case that you actually want to manually type some sort of scenario input, let's say you want to type in the response manually, this would come in handy. Here we have the scenario settings. I don't use this all too much. Uh, notes, you can add notes to various places if you'd like. And then we have auto line. So what auto line does is that it just makes it look neater. So if I click on auto line, it's gonna auto line that uh, module that I just moved out of place. Air explain flow, I don't really use explain flow all too much just because I tend to understand the flow myself. And if you click on these three dots, you can export the blueprint or import the blueprint. So this right here is called a scenario, but you could actually go ahead and export this scenario or blueprint and then imp and another colleague can actually import it themselves just so that they have all the modules already uh, placed with inside of it. Now under tools, these are the common like tools that are used or common tools or modules that are used with the make.com. So we have repeaters, iterators, routers, aggregators. Uh, we have an ignore module, a resume module. Over here we have more tools such as uh, get variables, multiple variables, aggregators, different types of aggregators. And so right now, I'm. if you're brand new, it might get a bit more confusing for you, but don't worry. I'll, again, it just takes time for you to learn as far as like what all these different tools do. So what I'll go ahead and do now is actually just explain this workflow to kind of give you an a sense or idea of what make.com is actually capable of. So from left to right, the first one is a Google form. So when someone fills out a Google form, it's connected and it'll actually get the responses. So as you can see here, the input is the form being filled out. And if I drop down the menu here, you can see that they filled out their website URL, their email, their first name. Their first name was, let's see, ba uh, Bailey, their last name. It's a lot of drop down menus and their last name was GOAT, okay? Now, the magnifying glass on each of these modules allows you to actually inspect everything from an input and output um, perspective. So there's always an input and then there's always an output. So here, the Google Forms is basically an input of a form and then the output is that it's listing all the, outs, or the answers. Now, this HTTP request, what this one here does is that it actually gets the website URL 
it goes into the website URL that was given and then it reads the content. Okay, it reads the body type as raw and then the content type as a JSON. So as you can see here, the query string, our input here is that we're inputting Swim University, which is the output that we got from Google Forms. So again, there's like an input and output uh, structure to make.com. And the output basically is it reads the website. So this is a long string of data that the HTTP request has gone or requested from. So you can see it's a bunch of code. And so what we do with that code is that we basically turn that HTML into text. So by doing HTML to text, you can see this is the bunch of code because that's what websites basically are, right? It's a bunch of code, it's a bunch of text. And so with HTML to text, what this here does is that it removes all the HTML. Okay, so this is basically our input and notice how it's a very long string of input. But then the output, is now just it's a lot more less okay it's a lot less with the html and so the output is considerably a lot less and so what happens here is that if the http request is let's pretend that someone fills out the form and it's not a valid website we just ignore it and continue with it just because we have a if then or that or we have like an if response filter so with this here after the HTTP requests or HTML is turned into text, a router basically splits up the decision. So it can either go in this top route or this bottom route. And what's important also on make.com is that you have something called filters. So we have a filter on top that says if the data on that HTTP request exists, then it's going to go through this top route. But if the data on the HTTP request does not exist, then it's going to go through this bottom route. It's important to note that with make.com, while there is an input and output for every module, there is also something called mapping. And mapping has been done, as you can see here, you see this number nine dot. The number nine refers to this form here, number nine. And then recall how we turn the text into HT or the HTML into text. Again, this is called mapping data. So two dot refers to HTTP and then dot. And in order to map data, you actually just click on here and then you can map the heading, you can map the status code, you can map the form ID. And what's outlined in gray is basically giving you what the actual value is. So over here are the left-hand side mapped datas. So here's the last time or last submitted time, the create time. But on the right-hand side, as far as like the gray writing goes, that's the actual value of that data. So if you can kind of read it from like a left to right approach, the response ID is this. The status code is 200. The file side is 92314. The last submitted time is October 14, 2024. So uh, the really cool thing about make.com is that it already acquires all this data for you so that you don't have to actually figure it out yourself. So with the filters that I mentioned earlier, if you click on this filter, it's basically just map data. So we're just simply saying that we want the data to go in this top route if data exists. So therefore, we just simply click on the condition and then map data. And then the basic operator is that it just exists. And then like I mentioned the bottom, the bottom doesn't exist. Now this set tools variable, what we're doing here is that we're just trimming a lot of the new lines so that we can kind of condense it further just so it's not so much for Anthropic Cloud to read. So Anthropic Cloud is like chat GPT. So if you look at here, you can see that the variable value is all that um, text that we got from the text parser. But then the trimmed and stripped is now, it's just a more condensed version for Cloud or slash chat GPT to actually read. So if we click onto Anthropic Cloud, you can see that there's, this is where you actually set up the prompts. You're probably gonna be using ChatGPT or Anthropic Cloud a lot, but here's our prompt. And again, credits to Nick Sarah for actually coming up with this uh, scenario. But below is a website scrape with some contact details. Use it to customize an email reply to a prospect. Use this template. So hi, first name. So remember, we mapped number nine, the first name, okay? So we mapped number nine and recall how this right here is also number nine. And so with that, it basically gets the answer of the first name and then it says, thanks for reaching out. Uh, whatever the company name looks great. Love your value proposition, I'm out of the office. And so it sends a customized email. And so the really cool thing is that first, what we're trying to do here is basically act as like a human being that actually has seen their website and then sent an email. So the first email is a confirmation. And so this next module is a send email an email module where the address, again, we mapped it from the Google Forms responses. The subject, thanks for filling out our intake form. It's plain text. Hello, first name. We want to let you know that we received your message. We pride ourselves getting back to you within five minutes. 
So we act again as a human. So a sleep module is where this comes in handy. So we just sleep for about 10 seconds. I should probably rename this to sleep to just right click. It's actually 10 seconds, not 154 seconds. And then afterwards we send another email. So the email address, again, we map from number nine, again, nine dot, the subject line, and then the text response gotten from Anthropic Cloud. So notice how it says five dot text response. If I go into Anthropic Cloud, what that looks like is basically here. So it's the output of going into module number five. And then if you look at the text response, this is what's being input into this email here. So it all connects together. Uh, the thing with make.com is that as I've mentioned, it's a bunch of trial and error and it's a bunch of mapping together. So imagine that I ran into an error under the set variables module. I would just try to figure out and do some critical thinking like what went wrong. With the bottom module, it's just the same exact three steps as this last part on top of here. So it sends an email confirmation and then it sends another human email where um, it just says thanks for reaching out without the website data. So sometimes people may fill out the form where there's not a, a valid website and that's where this bottom module exists just because the data doesn't exist. And so with that, that's an example of, of a scenario that make.com can actually uh, utilize. Now, as I mentioned before, the best way to learn is to, number one, go through a series of trial and error of trying to make your own scenarios. Number two is to actually watch YouTube videos and then combine different scenarios that you watch on YouTube because there's a lot of scenarios on YouTube that'll teach you make.com or there's a lot of YouTubers that'll teach you make.com. But if you actually combine different bits and pieces of different scenarios that YouTubers have created, you'll come something with uh, that's still unique. And by kind of looking at their scenarios and downloading and importing their blueprints, you can understand like what's happening, okay? so. Uh, over here, as you can see, I can click on send email confirmation. You can read through what the subject line is, how they mapped it, and that's a good way to learn as well. The last thing is actually something called Make Academy, which is made from make.com themselves. So you can actually sign up for this here. It's absolutely free. There's a bunch of courses and content that you can learn make.com from. It explains what iterators, aggregators, um, how to map. It explains all of that. So it's an entirely free online course and it's well structured. So go ahead and look it up as well as far as Make Academy goes. That's basically the general overview as far as like how to use make.com. I hope you found this video helpful. And again, if you haven't signed up for make.com yet, you can use my link down below to get the one month pro plan for free. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.